years. Okay, um, I, as usual with these things, we have a ton of slides to get through, and um, so and, and time is, is is very limited. So this is update number num, number six. It's um, pre-construction pre-construction planning. So it's a project update. We're going to introduce Kieran O'Connor's Stuart Construction, and also supported by PPM. And we're going to show some of uh, the federation of the of the various different design discipline models, um, and also then afterwards the the genius um, the BIM bar, which is a which is a new thing. This is the project team. Um, seeing this photograph, some of the faces have changed and some are missing. So and some have some some have been added. So um, that's going to be an interesting Photoshop for later on. Also, you should know that that all these presentations are available now on a web page on the on the CETA. Um, website give some background, the introduction, what it's all about, and also the, the, the presentations themselves, the power the powerpoints are available, um, as in PDF and downloads. You can just um, you can just contact uh, Barry McCauley to do it. Just uh, the last the, the last um, we had a, we had a group a team group uh, presentation in 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 March, and in April we ended up just having one presenter on each day. So Colin Reid presented on on M and E in in May, and then we had. Cathy Malloy of Austin Ready and Associates presented in, 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 in May. And they're great presentations, but what it, what it actually meant is that the original project goal of, of integrating the team got a little bit fragmented. That we, we had a, quite an integrated team in the early few months and the early few presentations with a lot of interactive and feedback. And then I think what happened is people were extremely busy with different workloads. Again, this is a, a purely voluntary effort. Um, I ask, my, my wife keeps asking me why we're we doing this, but it's a purely voluntary effort, hoping to, to raise all, all, all boats and also trying to tr see through, the, to try to get at some reality of, of all of this, this BIM stuff and BIM hype. The vision, there's five, five goals there on the, on, the, on, the, on the website, integrate to collaborate, that comes from Mervyn Richard, who said, even without any technology, we should be looking at 10% saving by people just sitting around the table and communicating. And that, and that includes the contractor. So what we tried to do in this session was, was refocus. Also create process flow, flow of information so you can read that's all self-explanatory and also try to highlight where's the value for all the designers involved, the contractor involved and also fundamentally the client and, and FM. A lot of talk about digital, well this is digital, ones and zeros, you know computers understand this, bread and butter, I can only understand it by putting in a translator and if I put in a translator with, with Japanese conversion, that's what I get. And if I, and of course, the English version of that is our, is our, our team, a team motto, vision without action. So again, we're trying to take action. So this month, try to refocus the team in a meeting in, in my offices in, in North County Dublin. And um, we, we, we had Stuart involved, John Paul Construction, um, had, had to withdraw from the team because due to commitments down in the Middle East. And um, so, um, Stewart's been supported by that's on, on the left there that's that's Grove McGuire from, from PPM. And they worked with, with, with Synchro and Stewart's have worked with Synchro before. So that was that was the, the, the fit on that. We did get Gerald Sullivan was kindly kind enough to give us a, a an Autodesk Bub saw presentation because actually our collaboration online is actually with um, using Dropbox. Right? And Dropbox is, is is great. I've got a fifty gig Dropbox account, so pretty much all the folder are going through my my my, my office um, my office um, email, but with Dropbox it's it's not ideal for for auditing audit trails control of, of information. So we were looking at other applications. We we did look at um, uh, uh, try to look at project wise in, in the early days of the, of the project, but really that was just a little bit outside our our budget. But um, certainly I think on, on larger projects tools like that are, are will come into wrong. Um, but Buzzsaw, we've, we've, we've got the demonstration, so we're hoping they're still hoping to implement that throughout the, the, the rest of the team because we want to try to prove. A lot of us, we've never used a lot of these tools before, so it's the first time, so we're just trying to be transparent about our experiences um, and what we're finding. Um, again, we've refocused online meetings, and um, Trevor Woods, Construct IT, also Cathy again with, with Cost S, looking at the model, how we're exchanging files, what information are we missing? And how can we improve our design outputs to, to give them more what, what they want? Also, um, I would say that we actually looked at using um, um, PPM. We're hoping to use uh, the Bentley Navigator tool and also Navisworks tools, and but a little bit more about that about, about that, that later. 
these are the KPIs that Barry McCauley, our, our, our PhD student, has been has, has developed in line with, with our, our vision goals and, and, and values. And um, with that, and actually there's a survey now at the moment, so we're hoping to have more input on that on the, on the next meeting, but really how, how we're doing. So I'm just going to hand over to, to, to Kieran, who's been 11, he's a chartered engineer, he's been 11 years with Stuart Construction, so he's going to talk about um, Stuart's and their input. Thank you, Paul. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, just give you a brief introduction. My name is Kieran O'Connor. I'm a chartered engineer with um, JSL Group Limited Trading as Stuart. Um, I work as a contracts manager, and I started as a site engineer, and I've worked up um, over the years to the level I am at the moment. Um, this morning, I'll be discussing briefly our company, what we do, um, our experience with BIM to date, and uh, pre-construction planning for the uh, CETA project. Um, Stuart was founded in 1902 um, and has uh, to, to, to this day still managed and owned by uh, the Stuart family, fourth generation. They have um, a strong culture of uh, delivering quality projects uh, to clients that include um, design and build um, office buildings. Um, this this uh, culture of quality is evident through the, a lot of return clients that we uh, retain um, on, on a year on year out basis. We've uh, recently achieved um, certain awards such as the uh, School Building Project of the Year and Civil Engineering uh, Project of the Year 2013. Um, we also uh, have completed projects such as um, the retail sector, um, sports and leisure. Uh, part of our um, sustainability, uh, or we are proud to, to, to have um, achieved certain projects uh, with a view um, of sustainability. Um, we were we, we, we completed the first um, public funnel Briam excellent retail office in a design and build uh, basis uh, for the for the decentralised office in Roscommon, and we are currently um, targeting a lead gold certificate standard for another building mm -hmm. we've um, completed recently. Um, we are we do try to uh, engage in in um, new technologies, and we do see that. So let's skip down enough. Um, we do see that, um, we feel that uh, BIM is, is definitely um, the future for, for uh, the construction industry. Um, yeah, sorry, no, I just missed the slide there. Uh, we did um, engage in BIM for and, and uh, generated a BIM model for uh, the Tipperary office, and we found this to be a very um, interesting. Uh, procedure. We, we use it mainly as a learning tool for our own staff and uh, we, we did receive very good feedback from the client. Uh, we carried out some clash detection and um, sequence modelling for the whole structure. Uh, it, it, was, it was used primarily as a learning tool for us and uh, for, our, for our company. Um, so you can see there the model uh, how it's uh, turned out. In terms of the, um, the uh, pilot project, we were very you know, excited to be to become involved in the, the um, pilot project again to try and learn more about how BIM can be used for our own benefit to to, to become more um, commercially viable and uh, more competitive. Um, and when when I suppose looking at pre-construction planning, um, you tend to look at various elements such as the scope of the works, building structure, uh, site constraints, budget duration, prelims, sequence setup. Um, procurement and all of these obviously feed into health and safety. Um, the information that you know, we would use to try and understand the scope of the project, obviously the, the 2D drawings, we see there are obviously a lot of demolitions to be, um, be uh, carried out in terms of the uh, existing structures to be altered. Uh, and there are obviously new elements to be built as well, extensions um, for some uh, site works. and. Uh, one or two story elements to be built. Um, the existing structure of the building is, is a steel portal frame and um, you know I've, I'm very new to actually using the software uh, the particular BIM site and I did find it very um, powerful and it's, 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 it's you know it gives a lot of information in terms of what is there and what is to be achieved. Um, but I did find that uh, while using the software that I was you know, I, I wanted to have the uh, hard copy of the A3 drawings in my hand as well at the same time, uh, just to, to, I suppose, more of a, a backup because, for me, you know, you, you do get comfort in, in what you're familiar with. 
Uh, we can see that there are obviously certain elements of precast to go into the building. There's uh, first floor timber, um, joists and, and uh, roof covering and uh, M&E elements as well. Uh, we can see from the mod that there are uh, new internal finishes and um, roof coverings and cladding etc to be, to be built. So all this information is, uh, you know, can be taken from the model, from the scope of works, the specifications, bill of quantities, and um, obviously from there you want to try and build your uh, final construction program. And I think it's important to say that uh, the project is assumed to be between tender stage and um, construction stage at the moment. And under the current government public contracts, um, you know, you, you, you cannot appoint a contractor until the full design is complete. So I suppose constructability reviews is one of the elements that BIM is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a feature of BIM that it's the contractors involved in the constructability review, but you obviously can't have a constru constructability review when the design is complete to appoint the contractor. So currently the, the, the uh, I suppose the situation with the, with the government contracts don't necessarily allow that to, um, to occur. Um, but uh, from the, I suppose, the scale of the project that uh, you, you can understand the scope and the, the, the durations, um, you would kind of focus on what prelims are going to be required. So on-site and off-site staff, welfare facilities, scaffolding, plant and equipment, these might seem like very banal items, but they're obviously critical to completing the building. Um, and on a project of this scale, like, you know, you have, um, I suppose, you know, limited resources as such. To, um, to try and uh, complete the building. Um, from looking at the model, I found the, the RC <coughs> looking at site constraints. The model was very, very useful in uh, even seeing the lie of the land. I, I have never been on site, but I can, I can see straight away that there are overhead power lines. This, the building is adjacent to a road. There are quite, um, quite a severe slope towards the back of the site. There are adjacent buildings, um, houses, church, and uh, all of these would feed into how the site is going to be um, Managed. How are you going to manage deliveries in and out? How are you going to manage uh, traffic with the uh, public? And uh, in terms of the power lines, is it going to be um, clashes with uh, potential plant and equipment? Um, we can see from the site layout plan that the building itself is ex out of the extremities of, extremities of the site. So um, that would mean that obviously you cannot really drive around the site with any plant and equipment, which means that you're going to have to put up a tower crane. Um, so that was a rough uh, estimation of where the crane would go. Um, and I basically just drew that on a page with a compass. So there was nothing very technical about it. Um, but, it, you know, obviously the model can show that and we can put that on the model and it, it, it is shown later. Um, the red line would indicate where obviously there, there may be protection needed for overhead power lines, be consultation with the ESP networks, etc., to make sure that that's um, feasible. Um, the John Paws did uh, produce the site layout uh, for the uh, show the compound, so we can see the unloading areas area for where the containers will go and the board the uh, hoarding line. Um, in terms of the construction sequence, um, obviously all this information that we're gathering from the model and also from the other documents would uh, feed into our construction sequence and our plan, um, and they're basically the, the high level. Uh, sequence of, of events that we would um, undertake and I suppose we will be drilling into more detail with the next presentation uh, in terms of the construction program we will we'll, we'll, we'll be identifying activities, uh, duration estimates and, and dependencies, cost estimates, cash flow and all these will be linked back to the model and I'm interested and, and um, excited to see how this will actually work in reality. Um, in terms of health and safety um, and John did touch on it that the, the you know, health and safety is obviously critical to what we do and um, to, to, you know, to plan ahead is critical because if you don't plan you're going to have an accident. Um, and the model is, you know, I, I was very impressed by the amount of information we could uh, take from it and what, um, what control measures need to be put in place to prevent accidents and to increase the level of safety in sight. So for example you can see that, you know, we can model the um, protection for the overhead power lines. You can see the hoarding in place, the site containers, and obviously the um, site layout there, obviously in the model. And this, uh, I think it gives a very good um, feel for, you know, what is going to be required to, um, to build this building in a safe manner. Um, you can reduce the amount of uh, prelims you want to have on site, the amount of scaffolding, and uh, to a minimum, 
and uh, obviously you can do a measure as well for how much you're going to require. Um, and just finally, um, I suppose there's been a lot of high-tech uh, slides and, and uh, graphics shown today and um, I'm going to leave it with this one, which is uh, very basic, a man digging a hole with a, with, you know, with a shovel. Um, and you might ask why, why is that there, like the, the, you know, the, the shovel probably predates the telephone box and um, you know, yet they're, they're still using sites today and I, I think they'll be using sites for a long, a long time yet. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to um, fully you know, replace reality with the virtual world and you, you, you won't be able to uh, get away from the fact that you're going to need experienced construction professionals to go out on site and see exactly what is there. You know, um, nothing is going to replace that. So thanks for your attention. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just going to finish up with some, some, of the, some of the clash detection we actually did on, on, on the model and then I'm going to just go through uh, rapid fire. Actually, this is a native one. I got this from, from um, uh, Bernard in, um, in, in Archicad. It's a, it's a combined model with the M&E and, 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 the, and the architecture. And also, uh, Bernard Vorbin had a meeting with, with Colin Reid M&E. There's a Revit model there on the, on, on the screen. And there's um, Bernard's the Archicad architect, architectural model. And really, OK, they're, they're not, they're not uh, uh, it's not digitally combined, but they're uh, intellectually combined because there's two intelligent people who are, who are sharing, discussing information about, about the model. That's, a, that's a, actually the, the export Revit model and, um, I think, and, and the IFC and the import in the, in, in, in the Archicad. And I really, when I see stuff like this, I think it really just comes down to the translations. The translators don't always, aren't properly aligned. We've, we've had lots of problems. Sometimes it's too much information or, or it's a little setting that needs to be done. So there's definitely a learning curve with, with giving people the, the, as in all communication, there's, there's issues with what information do you, do you get and, 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 and give. So this, this, this is the site the, in Techlip Insight. You can see there on the, on the, the left hand side, there's a, there's a, there's a, new, a structural model, M&E model, and an architectural model. And uh, they're all, all federated, similar to we've seen in, in other, other packages. And, and literally, this is what you can do. You can build sequences. This is um, fast forwarded of the, of the various slides that you can take from, from um, the, the TechLib from, from tech BIM site. So really, to, to, to highlight areas, you can see you run clash detection for different rules. You can set up different rules for, for clashing. Looking at the back of the site, you can see there's one of the m and &E, there's, there's an air handling unit right in front of an exit door, so obviously that's a, that's a, that's a big problem. Um, also up in the, in, the, in the ceiling space here, there's loads of clashes with, duct, with, 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 with ducting. Deliberately done. And you can, again, you can assign um, priorities and, and, and um, uh, responsibilities for that, and, and, and as we, we've seen in a few of the other um, present, presentations as well. So, just from just from 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 my point point of view, and actually I know that Alan Alan uh, McDonald was, would think differently, but I'm a structural engineer, and actually I use Archicad as my platform. There's a lot of reasons for that. I can tell people about it better afterwards, but um, I won't I won't go into it now. But any any BIM modeling environment, the attraction of working in, in 3D is a different experience. That's just full stop. Looking at looking at plans, sections, elevations, where that's how we're how we're trained to work and think in a methodical high fashion. Working 3D is a wholly different, different experience. And it's something that it takes time to, to learn how, how, how to do that. But there are advantages in this space. You can see the, the, the shaded out bit. That's actually, that's actually the, the headroom that's required. Because I have a downstand beam of structure. And I have a little bit of structure. Actually, I could, my beams could be deeper. The services could come through. Or do you know what? I can pop the beams up into the floor. There's lots of things you can do. And actually seeing it Seeing it at that, you maybe develop a better appreciation for, for, some, for some of the models. Also, seeing some of the interfaces, the interactions, some of, some of, the, um, some of the slope issues, retaining walls that are retired there, you're going to have to suspend, it, suspend the floor. Also, get for, from uh, for a client perspective, being able to show them, there's actually, this is a structure. It's not rocket science or anything like that. <coughs> These are just those uh, elements of structure. And, um, also, because it's an existing timber floor, you have to vent, there's a lot of other, other issues that may not be immediately apparent, and then from clash detection, you still need, um, I, I think, educated and trained professionals who are going to be looking at, at this. Also, other things like fall out in, into the model, which could be assigned by uh, clash detection rules, but other things are just purely, just come from modeling error. 
simply when you just copy and paste multiple copies, particularly in any, in any BIM authoring tool, you can end up with issues like this. You know, obviously uh, a problem drops across the floor, but you can, you can correct that easy enough. This is, a, a, is the MEP model referenced in the ARCHICAD. I really, I was actually dead impressed how, how, how pretty clean it, it, it came in. And also to work with, with basically in, in the 3D space with these type of applications is just pretty cool. And actually to see that you can, you can actually align them with windows or, or whatever you want to do to, to avoid additional, avoid a different structure. This is a, one thing we've, we found in this project that actually SketchUp has been a very versatile project. I particularly like it because it's, 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 um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very cost effective um, and, and a low entry point, I guess, particularly if you just want to play with, with a 3D modeling space. But actually there's a stru structural model taken into, in, into SketchUp, I'm actually surprised by the visualization. Also the thing to note is actually some of the, the file sizes, it's interesting, an IFC zip file is, you know, is only a, a fraction, a fraction of, 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 of an IFC model file, but then native model files can be much, much bigger, or a, a VRML file is. Gets, gets, gets very, very, very big. We took it into Salibri model checker. And you see there on the, on the left hand side, you can highlight elements in the model and actually gives you a lot of data about that model. That's, you know, it's just a case in point. Also, you can see other applications, you can see that the information does track through. So these are free viewers. Anyone, anyone can look at them and there's, and there's a load of them that we looked at. So, so um, and again, there's a, the MEP engineers might be interested in, there's a DDS viewer. Um, actually, Salibri, DDS viewer, um, um, Tecla, they're all Scandinavian, and I suppose that's, there's a lot of free viewers available, and I suppose Building Smart, there's a lot of development in IFC particularly, come, all coming out of, out of, out of Scandinavia. Um, there's one thing that's shot in the DDS, DDS viewer I like, you import the model, and of course it picks up the location, so it's tying it through, and I believe, um, particularly for M&E, because it's developed for MEP engineers, that um, that's something that's Interesting. This way, I had I've I've got so much software on on my my uh, laptop. This is I actually have a, a Navisworks viewer. I know Trevor uh, Trevor Woods gave a, a copy of a Navisworks works works file to to Jared to have, the, the have a look at it. And um, this is one thing that we you know I it, it was working okay, and, and then I wasn't able to look at it again. So so software it happens needs to be updated, needs to be managed. So you, if you have a lot of tools on on on, on your your desktop, it doesn't it doesn't um, um, work like that. And the last one I show is, is some of the input from Garode um, McGuire from the, the Federated Synco model. This is up the side again. He took a lot of different discipline IFC files and he, he took them through the side. There's a demolition um, demolitions model, some of the site, site works set out. We had some, um, some uh, clash detection in this report, some clash, det um, clash detections again, and then it, it can. Um, again to compile the report and we've seen that again before and that's that's uh, pretty much we've a, a genius bin bar uh, gonna gonna just happen now and the idea the genius bin bar i just say i didn't know what a genius bar was but apparently that's a that's a, an apple uh, thing i don't use apple products i just use windows and i think there's analogies there with people who use different types of software you just never use the others because you just never never use them so so maybe there's a, a shift in thinking so and changing your thinking is is healthy i think um, so we're going to join that with, 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 with the vendors, myself and Bernard, we'll set up our own laptop so you, people are welcome to look at the project files and, um, and hoping we're going to share those IFC with, 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 with the vendors and certainly in Jupiter and hopefully with the wider group so everyone can learn from the experience. So next month we've, we've kind of on-site project management, share of IFC models um, ref refinement and again we're going to, I think that the, the Genius BIM bar, we're going to try to do that interact. So I think people should, once you get close and personal, with the models, you, you actually, you know, it's, it's, it's great stuff really. Uh, and the retention is huge, and the code compliance checking, and, and that's, a, that's a target we haven't started at yet. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you.